Okay, so now you've registered your version of Microsoft Visual Basic, you're going to want to make a program. So today I'm going to show you basic buttons and labels, and also how to make an executable file. So uh, if you want to start Visual Basic, um, I'll put any links that I mention in the description, although I doubt I'll mention any. You're going to want to create a new project. For some reason my computer's been really slow because of the color scheme, I think. So if you go into New Project or click File New, go on Windows Form Application, call it whatever you want, I'll call it Basic, and then it will create this. Um, you should have the side if you set it up. If not, um, just go on Toolbox, it'll be here. Yours might be like this, click on Toolbox and then pen it. You want it like that. Okay, so what I'm going to call mine is, if you see this, this is your form. Okay, so I'm going to go over the basics. This is your form. Uh, this is like what your window will look like. Uh, you have all these properties here. You have your icon. So if you look, here's the icon at the moment. That's just standard. I wanted to change it. Then I click the three dots. Choose an icon like that. And it changes, as you can see. Um, you can have start positions. So uh, you can change to Windows default, center screen, wherever. Um, to actually test and see what your program looks like, you have the debug, which checks for any bugs. You can either press F5 or click this little play green arrow. So if I click that now, you'll see the icon there. This is Windows default position. Okay, so if you look, it starts up top left roughly. If you change that to center screen, which I like to do for most of my programs because it looks, I don't know, it just looks better. It starts in the middle of the screen, which I quite like. Um, you can change the border. So if you have a look at the moment, uh, you can I can adjust it now. If I had a program that was specific and I wanted it to stay a certain size, then you'll go where it says form border style, and then you want to go on something that has fixed. I prefer fixed single, uh, and it gives you this, and you can't change it at all. But at the moment, you can still maximize it. So if you only filled up this little box and maximized it, you'd have this huge box with a little bit of text. So if you want to find where it says maximize uh, box there, well that's minimize. Uh, if you want to set that to false, it stops them from maximizing it. You can do the same with minimize, but I don't really see the point. So now if I debug it, you can't maximize it. You can still minimize it, but you can't maximize. Okay, so you can close it. Okay, so now we've got our basic form. I'm going to call it up here it says form 1, this is what it's called um, so if you go where it says text and properties you can change that so if I call it basic form then it changes here, if you want to actually change its program name, I guess that's what you want to call it and then this is it, up here where it says name in brackets and what that does is say you had two forms and you wanted to call form number 2 from form number 1 when you press a button then you'll, you'd call this maybe main and then you'll call your second one or depending on what was on it. You could just leave it form 1 and form 2 but I'll go over that later. I'm going to keep it as form 1 at the moment. So at the moment I've just got this basic form. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Um, and here's all your tools. So you've got labels, buttons, checkboxes uh, and basically it's all pre-designed stuff and that's a button. So if I go into debug mode and I can press that button. It's not programmed to do anything at the moment so it's not going to work. So if I just delete that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one button and one label. And with the label, you have the properties. You can change the font of it uh, with font somewhere. Uh, here it is, font. I'm going to keep it the same. And here's the text. This is what the label actually says. So if I wanted it to say, hello world, then um, we'd have button. And if you wanted the button to well, if you wanted the button to say show, for example, then you change that like that. I'm going to make my button a bit bigger. And then when you press debug, you'd have hello world and show. But obviously, it, that still doesn't do anything because nothing's programmed. So I'm going to adjust that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when you press the button, um, hello world shows. At, but when you start the program, hello world will be invisible or it won't be there. Um, this is good for co uh, complicated programs, I would say, um, but I'll go over it a bit later. So what you're going to want to do to make Hello World invisible, 
you're going to want to go on the properties to where it says visible and you want to set that to false okay so now when you debug it it won't be there okay so and then what you want to going to do going to want to do even you're going to want to double click the button and you'll be brought to the code and page uh, what this means is because I've double clicked the button it means I'm scripting for the button so this is, this is um, what, whatever code I put in here will happen when I press button 1 once so I'm going to put if button 1 dot enabled 1 dot enabled equals true what that means is if button 1 is pressed then what I want to sorry my mouse my keyboard's running out of batteries then what I want to happen is I want to label one dot uh, visible to equal true. So what this means that as soon as I press um, as soon as I press button one, it's going to make label one visible again. So if we test it, then it shows. Okay, so that's pretty much the very basics of it. You can you can make it so it changes text. I just go over that real quick so I don't have to do a double tutorial. Sorry, um, maybe we want to click change, call the button change, oh, I will anyway. Um, if you double click that button now, then if you put if button 2 dot enabled, because it's, it's, two, it's uh, button number 2, and I'll show you why now. If you go up to name, there's button 2 there, and there's button 1 here. If you wanted to change uh, what it's called, so if you wanted to change this name to show which I'll do just quickly to show you and now if I wanted to call this one to change then when I go to the code uh, well in the code load if I go to the code it's going to give me these errors because I've changed it so what I would have to do is I'd have to change where it says button 1 to show i would have to change ah there we go, it's already changed it for me um, if change dot enabled equals true, then what I want to happen is I want label one dot text to change to the text has changed. Because what this means is when I press button two, um, then hello world or label one will change the text will change um, to the text has changed. Oh wait. And you want to I'm gonna add equals true. Actually, no, no, you're just gonna, gonna leave it like that. Okay, so if you want to test that, wait, no, you are gonna want to have it to equals true. What's wrong? Oh, I know what's wrong. Um, you can't call it show, so I'm gonna have to call it button one again. Sorry. Yeah, I usually don't change them, so I'd not. <laughs> okay, now it should work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if you show it, it says hello world. And if you click change. Oh, come on. Oh, I've got equal to two on the end. Yeah, that's not supposed to be there. Alright, now it should work. The text has changed. Good. There we go. Show, change. There, that's it. That's, that's for very basic buttons. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe, comment, and rate, and I'll put out another video soon.